Hey guys, what's going on? Zura over here. In this video, I want to talk about initiative in chess. A uh, sense of initiative, this concept uh, might be relatively new if you are just getting started with chess. Um, by the way, if that is the case, I would also um, recommend you go check out my previous videos uh, about um, fundamental principles of chess and uh, end game fundamentals. Uh, and do let me know what you think. Uh, if you already haven't done so, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it would help a lot. Now, uh, what is initiative? Let's get started uh, with that. In general terms, uh, the side uh, that directs the course of the game um, has the initiative. Uh, this means activity, uh, control of the center, uh, development, who has the better development uh, uh, space, um, weaknesses, uh, strength, uh, these are all elements of the initiative, all right? Uh, whoever uh, has better of these elements will have the initiative. To illustrate the point better, let's jump uh, right into this example. Uh, again, for the material, I am using the classic work of uh, Jose Raul Capablanca, third world champion, uh, chess fundamentals. Um, I think this will probably be the last one, uh, the last uh, examples from the book. Uh, so uh, let's enjoy it. Uh, now, uh, what is going on in this position? We uh, have a very symmetrical game with one major difference. Uh, white knight is developed on f3 while black knight is on e7. Uh, when we have uh, kingside castle knight uh, is better placed on f6 because it con controls, well, defends the h7 square. From e7 it's a little farther away and we'll see how that will be punished. Uh, the first thing you look at uh, when you do when you uh, look at the position is you uh, count the material. What is going on? How do we evaluate the position? Uh, we will talk about that in a separate video. Uh, but uh, right now, let's focus on this one. We have um, equal material, uh, and bishop is under attack on d3. What do we do with that bishop? If we move uh, it backwards, white probably has a, a slight advantage here, considering the fact that bishop on c8 is. Uh, a little passive, but um, not a big deal, uh, especially uh, early on converting this kind of advantage is, is almost unimaginable. Uh, so let's get to the point why we are looking at this example. Um, this is called uh, Greek gift, uh, Greek sacrifice. Uh, bishop takes h7. Uh, white hits the weakest point uh, in the black's camp here uh, to bring the king out and expose it to um, no, white knight and the queen. Uh, this combination is usually done uh, when knight goes to g5 check. Now, if king goes backwards, uh, white would have queen h5, threatening queen h7 checkmate. Um, and if white, uh, if black tries to um, cover the h7 square, we can uh, block this diagonal and e4 would win uh, the game. Uh, after queen h5, if rook mo moves on the side, queen takes f7, king h8. Uh, What's the quickest way to win here? Um, I don't think it's queen h5 check. I don't see how it's exactly um, a win after king g8, uh, because after queen h7, queen h8 check, black will have knight g8. So uh, probably something simpler uh, uh, and uh, pragmatic, attacking the queen on d8 uh, and using the, the four, f fourth rank for the trampoline. Uh, this would be called rook trampoline. Uh, now rook from d4 will threaten to go to h4 and uh, checkmate the king in the corner. So uh, black's best bet is to go forward uh, with uh, king g6 and white brings uh, queen into uh, the attack. Uh, now um, this is also called x-ray. Queen is located right in front of the uh, king. Now uh, white has a lot of threats here. Uh, any uh, knight discovery heal will be pretty dangerous for black, so uh, black will need to uh, act. 
uh, somehow attack the screen. Uh, black can do that uh, by two means. One would be e5 to open up the bishop, and so bishop could attack the queen, and another one would be to play f5. Let's uh, first consider e5, because f5 is probably a stronger move. Uh, on um, e5, white can uh, jump uh, this knight to e6 with the check, now attacking the uh, queen, uh, queen also on d8. Uh, king uh, will move on the side, uh, if a uh, king goes to the other side, queen g7 would uh, lead to a checkmate, so king f6. Um, now, uh, if we take the queen, opponent will also take our queen, so uh, we don't want to trade, we are pieced down here. Uh, now, we need additional uh, forces into the attack. This is a very important part of the initiative, uh, ability to uh, utilize um, your pieces. So, uh, white uh, brings the rook into the attack here by f4, threatening to open up now f takes e5 and expose king even more. Uh, black cannot allow that possibly, uh, so immediately rejects the um, uh, opening up the f file here with e4, uh, blocking it. Uh, queen g5 check and then going to e5, forcing king into a very passive position here and then rook f d1 um, basically um, doesn't win the queen because there is knight d3 but puts black in a very difficult situation after knight takes e4 rook d3 is still a threat all black pieces are tied up here um, d3 knight is definitely done for uh, if king uh, e8 uh, there will be knight d6 check i believe if king c6 one of the example lines that uh, I can immediately see, for example, be something like taking on d3 and then um, checking the king, queen c7. Um, uh, if king a6, knight c5 check and taking the queen. Uh, if king goes forward, then rook c5 check and uh, um, checkmate uh, on the next move with uh, queen to a5. Um, all right, f5 is played now. Queen goes to g3. Uh, we obviously want to stay um, in front of the king here. Uh, king goes to h6, queen h4 check, uh, king g6, queen h7. Uh, now, if king takes on g5, we will take on g7, and if uh, something like knight g6, f4 would result in a checkmate here. Um, queen um, alone actually is able to uh, finish off. Um, since king is so far advanced. Well, it actually has um, help of a couple of white pawns. Um, the same thing would happen if king h5, f4, now queen g5 is the threat, queen h7 is also a checkmate threat there, so both of them will uh, be impossible to uh, defend. Um, king uh, f6 is uh, more tenacious here for black, and now again we need to bring more firepower uh, into the attack. Um, how would we do that? e4. Um, threatening now e5 and also simply trade uh, trade on f5 uh, and uh, open up the files. Uh, d file and uh, e file uh, which will um, allow rooks to join the party, join the attack. Knight g6, e takes f5, uh, e takes f5, uh, now rook h8 uh, uh, was not possible because g6 was hanging, so black had to capture back on f5, rook a to d1, attacking the queen, uh, black tries to block it with knight d3, and on queen h3, knight jumps to f4, um, attacking it with the check, so basically if uh, white tries to take on d8 with the rook, knight h3 uh, comes with the check, and white will have to capture that, and then black will uh, simply capture the rook. A um, little trick, but uh, on knight d to f4, white can simply move on the side to g3, and on queen c7, there might not be an immediate way, to, uh, immediate way to um, crush black's defenses. Uh, but uh, this is where um, really. Um, deep understanding of initiative comes in. White brings last remaining piece into the attack, um, after which uh, Black's defenses uh, will simply be outpowered. Rook f to e1, 
uh, now both open um, files here are controlled by uh, white rooks uh, and for a good illustration point here uh, what would happen if black tries to simply uh, get the pieces out bishop e6 uh, ends up in a very nice checkmate rook takes e6 knight takes e6 and two knights here deliver the checkmate with the help of uh, a queen uh, beautiful geometry uh, so that illustrates the point why um, bishop e6 might uh, not be a good idea knight e2 was tried into the game a uh, little tactic um, basically based on the idea that uh, queen trades uh, will make black's defensive task easier and that is very true if you are under attack you always want to trade queens if you are uh, the one attacking you don't want to trade queens but uh, in this situation uh, white had a little tactic in mind after rook takes e2 queen takes g3 now if we take back on g3 the queen then black would take our knight on g5 uh, however we have this intermediate move, intermezzo, knight goes to h7 check. That's why knights are very effective um, attacking pieces. It's actually uh, effective attacking piece on one side and also uh, a good blockader as well. Um, so uh, understanding how to properly use um, the knights is, is uh, quite big of a skill. Knight h7 check, now king cannot get closer to the king so it has to retreat back and then we simply capture the queen back. Game continued, rook h8 to attack the knight, but the knight g5 check, king f6, and after f4, uh, black decided it was time to call it because rook d6 now cannot uh, be stopped, and that is a checkmate. Next, we're gonna see how to exploit weaknesses into opponent's position. Um, Capablanca calls this the force of the threatened attack. Uh, let's move to the next game. Uh, this game was played in 1913, um, exactly 110 years ago. Uh, e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3. We have French uh, on the board. Uh, d takes e4, knight takes e4. Uh, this would be called French with uh, knight uh, c3, uh, knight to d7, knight f3. Both knights are brought up into the game. Black also uh, brings uh, another knight uh, on f6 to challenge now our center. Knight takes f6, knight takes f6. Uh, the first unusual um, move order here for white, Calablanca goes knight e5. Um, normally, this would not be recommended. Um, we know um, in the fundamental principles of openings, uh, we spoke about the element of not moving the same pieces um, a lot of times. We just developed that knight uh, to f3 and then we are making another move with the knight. Um, normally, n that would not be recommended. Uh, normally, we would say bring out other pieces into um, the game here, for example, the bishop. Uh, but uh, what knight e5 does is stops uh, b6. Uh, in a lot of these positions, black wants to play b6 and develop the bishop on the long diagonal, um, and bishop becomes very active there. So uh, after knight e5, if you play b6, there is this move queen f3, which will make uh, black's life very difficult on the uh, white squares here. Bishop b5 is also um, uh, potentially um, a threat. Uh, so this would be justified in this case. Um, bishop to d6, queen f3. A uh, very interesting uh, way, actually, uh, to developing here. Uh, probably on c5, there is this move bishop b5 check, uh, which puts black also um, under under some questions here in, in, in development. Uh, so back to the game, queen f3, uh, c6 was played by uh, Blanco, uh, c3, 
strengthening the center and getting ready now to finish the development. Uh, short castle, uh, Cavalanga decides to go bishop g5. Um, normally, recommendation is we want to develop our queen side. Um, excuse me. Normally, uh, we want to develop our king side pieces first. Uh, but uh, this is where master um, understands the importance of uh, limiting the black's options here. Um, black is put under some uh, testing questions here. Uh, for example, how to uh, unpin this knight um, on uh, the g5 d8 diagonal. Um, and only after uh, Y will try to finish the develop. And that's what happens. Bishop uh, retreats back to e7 and now bishop d3. Bishop comes at the most comfortable square uh, and the diagonal in this position. Uh, knight e8 is played by black trying to trade pieces. This is the common um, technique uh, uh, called uh, releasing the tension here. Uh, black uh, wants to simplify the position. The side that is under, um, under attack basically uh, wants to trade uh, pieces um, in order to reduce the uh, power of that uh, attack or power of that initiator. So uh, knight goes back to e8, queen h3. Before trading uh, bishops, white forces black into a, um, committing weakness uh, after f5. Uh, if they want to block this diagonal that way, h7 checkmate was threatened, right, by queen. So either g6 or f5 there. I believe on g6, uh, white could even just go bishop h6, not trade it, knight uh, there, and then either uh, uh, long castle even. I don't think that sounds too crazy. <laughs> but uh, black decided to stop it with f5. Bishop takes e7, uh, queen takes e7, uh, short castle. Rook f6, now to uh, bring rook onto h6 um, and attack the queen. Uh, rook f e1, knight d6. Uh, rook f e1, knight d6. Now, um, what does white do here? Uh, okay, uh, most white pieces have been included into the attack except one. This rook on a1 uh, right now does not have a purpose. So what does white do? Bring it to e1. Bring the last remaining piece into the game. Rook e2, bishop d7. Black tries to accomplish the same thing. Rook a2 e1, rook e8. Now we could say that white has the full mobility in this position, so that uh, allows them to start uh, pushing forward with c4. Um, now threat becomes the d5 to open up the e5. Uh, knight goes to f7 and that is what happens. Um, <laughs> It always happens in such cases that if one line of attack is anticipated, there is another. And this is no exception to the rule. Um, knight d7 uh, would not be as strong here. There is a little trick. Uh, you may think bishop f5 here uh, wins the pawn. Uh, because if you take uh, with the rook on f5, then queen takes f5. And rook takes, a, rook takes e8 is a checkmate. However, after bishop takes f5, there's a counter trick. Their knight will go to g5, attack our queen on h3, and also um, defend the uh, pawn on h7. Very important check there, right? And then uh, rook will uh, take the bishop on f5. So uh, for that reason, d5 here is much stronger as played in the game by Cavablanca. Uh, Knight takes, rook takes e5, g6. Queen goes to h4, king g7. Black is also trying to put the defenses together here. 
queen goes to d4. Now white tries from the other side. This is, again, what we are talking about when we mention initiative. White is consistently trying to pose black problems, pose threats. Right now, threat is to take on e6 and then take again with the rook because uh, queen pins the black rook. So black plays c5 here, attacking the queen. Queen retreats back again, keeping the that threat. b6 and d takes e6. I don't think uh, it was possible for black to mm, defend that threat anymore. So black decides to go into the passive defense here after bishop c8. Um, also, the case is uh, white will not be able to uh, comfortably take advantage of that e6 extra pawn because uh, right now white is using all the pieces into uh, the attack. So how do we um, strengthen it uh, and take it to the next level? So one of our pieces right now does not have a lot of purpose. That is bishop on d3. What do we do with that bishop? We bring it back on this big diagonal, uh, f3 square to d5. Uh, however, we did block the e file, so black will take on e6. Uh, bishop f3, king f7, bishop d5. Uh, that leads to another deadly um, pin on now e file and also on this diagonal a to g8 diagonal queen moves on the side to bring a rook into the defense there queen d6 queen e3 tripling up on uh, e file rook e7 now the final nail in the coffin here um, white creates additional weakness um, on the king side, h4 with the idea of h5 and g6 pawn will be too much for black uh, to handle. After f4, uh, simply h takes g, h takes g. Now you can tell g6 pawn is very loose, uh, defended by only this rook, um, which is also protecting the e6 square. So this should give us an idea about this um, combination, little combination. Bishop pins the rook and we can take queen uh, g6. Um, and we'll take the rook uh, on e6 on the next move. In the uh, first example of the force of threatened attack, um, we saw more direct attacks, while here uh, we did uh, bring all the pieces into the attack, but we needed uh, to create an additional weakness into the black's position in order to uh, break through. In the next game, uh, we will see... Um, Alvanga's game against Winter uh, on the topic of cutting the pieces um, from scene of action. Uh, Alvanga is playing with black, knight c3, six, knight c3, knight f6. We have four knights on the board, uh, bishop b5, bishop b4, short castle, short castle, bishop takes c6. d3 is also... Um, another main line here, but bishop c6 is uh, quite common as well. Um, recently, actually, the young talent Tani played this um, against me. It's a uh, very exact line, actually, with d3. I did not have a good experience with it. Um, bishop uh, back to d6, bishop g5, h6. Um, bishop g5, I would say, is a little unusual. I'm not sure for that time if it was a typical development here, uh, but I don't think uh, white quite wants to put the bishop there. I think white should try to play for f4, something like moving the knight back uh, or moving the knight, let's say, to d2 and maybe c4 and then going f4. Um, but all right, bishop g5 was played, bishop h4, and black plays c5. <laughs> this is a very nice move. I like it a lot because uh, it uh, technically stops d4, uh, right? That um, could uh, be thought to be the uh, main purpose of this move, but it also lays a trap. There is a, a, a bait here uh, to knight d5, okay? 
um, black in white, white to uh, pin that knight, uh, which in a lot of situations could be uh, a scary thing. Um, however, this is a counter trick. Um, and uh, considering the n <laughs> name of the topic in this game, we'll see what happens next. G5 is played in the game. Uh, now, knight takes g5 is not a possibility. Normally, obviously, that would be uh, a dream. But on knight takes g5, w black knight takes on d5 first, winning the knight then on g5. Okay? Black ends up winning a piece here. So, after g5, white is pretty much forced to take on f6. And that is what happened in the game. Uh, to give you the perspective where white went wrong, um, after c5, knight d5 was a really big decision. Um, knight d2 and bringing the knight from the other side and then again trying to go for f4 or even if not f4, f3 and that bishop can get back into the white's position. Uh, would still be um, quite okay here. Um, however, after this little trick, this bishop on g3 is completely out of the game. To make sure that it never ever sees a daylight, Alblanga goes even farther with bishop g4, forcing this pawn structure after taking on f3, queen f3, queen f3, g takes f3. Let's look at the bishop on g3. No matter what happens, in the game, that bishop will not be able to get back into the game. Okay, so black pretty much is a bishop up here. Only thing we, uh, we need to do is take the play onto the queen side and then decide, decide the game with an extra piece. That is exactly what Kaolanga does here, uh, brings all his forces onto the queen side even sacrifices a couple of pawns there, uh, but the piece is way more meaningful here uh, rather than uh, the pawns. So after rook takes b3, d4, rook back to b5. Uh, if e5 pawn is taken, then again, um, black will capture it back with the pawn. Rook c4 was played in the game. Rook to b4, rook takes c6, rook takes d4. Uh, black is a pawn up here. That bishop is still out of the game. So it's pawn and the bishop. So black uh, decided to give up. Uh, Kaulanga was already a world champion at this time. So both players, we could assume, were very strong. We All right, last example. Um, on this topic here, we're going to see um, a very beautiful uh, game played by um, Sir Thomas George from England uh, about uh, 100 years ago, um, commented by Abablanga. So d4, d5, we have Queen's uh, Gambit on the board, knight f3, c4, e6, Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, knight b to d7, bishop g5, c6. Um, bishop e7 is probably more standard uh, way of approaching the queen's gambit decline. c6 points to the start of Cambridge Springs variation here after queen a5. Uh, black basically aims to pin this knight and base entire counterplay on that idea uh, like knight will go to e4 and this bishop will come to b4 um, okay if white is not being careful there they might end up in a trouble um, it's not unimaginable to uh, think of knight e4 then taking on g5 and then taking also on um, c4 um, with the different move orders there um, okay, so black, uh, excuse me, white decides to get rid of that bishop. Um, bishop takes f6, knight takes f6, and a simple move 
a3. Uh, current theory after queen a5 is probably either takes on d5 and play queen d2 or um, play knight uh, d2, I believe, here. Um, yep, immediately knight d2. Uh, bishop f6 is also a, uh, a move here. Um, however, I think um, black is quite fine here with two bishops. Um, and I don't think white gets enough uh, compensation. You could argue it's probably just some space, bare center, but still. Bishop e7 was uh, played by black, but uh, I think bishop d6 would be better here. Bishop is uh, better placed on d6 generally. We want to put bishop on e7 when there is a pin uh, on f6 knight with, with, and the bishop on g5, but that, that is not the case here. Um, anymore, so I think bishop on d6 would be more actively placed. And as we'll see in the game here, after bishop e7, uh, bishop uh, d3, let's say um, knight takes c3, b takes c3, uh, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, and bishop f6 was played in, uh, into the game. Um, and the idea is that if black castles immediately, white will want to play knight e5. And knight will now become very active, and there is no f6 uh, to kick it uh, out because e6 is hanging with a check. And if you attack it with the bishop, then f4 and white gets uh, a very nice activity. All right. So um, if bishop had been developed on d6, all that problems would not uh, be existent right now. Uh, for black, but since that did not happen, now uh, black uh, decides to play bishop f6 to stop knight e5. Now, white plays short castle uh, here, and uh, this could easily happen by uh, the hastiness. Uh, maybe you do not take um, enough uh, time in the openings on your moves, uh, or it could simply uh, be a matter of character. Now, if we take a deeper look into this position, uh, if white wants to uh, take control of the center here, white needs to do it immediately right now. E play e4, and then when black goes short castle, go e5 and gain the space. All right? After uh, bishop e7, then only go castle. Uh, but matter of fact here is bishop is still passive, and white managed to gain considerable space in the center. Okay, uh, what happened in the game was short castle, and after short castle, e4 is was played, but it was answered with e5. So black is right on time to balance the center. Okay, um, if e4 had been played immediately. Um, e5 now was not possible because f7 pawn is hanging with the check. All right. So one of the turning points in the game, the small elements like this actually matter a lot and it create the bigger picture um, in the game and create the course of the game. Short castle, short castle, e4, e5, and Expectedly, I would say, from the careless play on the uh, previous move here, white continues uh, with another careless move. Let's again take time here and think what is going on um, on the board. White has here uh, a very strong mobile center, but black is able to hold its own here, uh, considering the e5 pawn, bishop and the queen uh, are able to all um, work together, right? So playing d5 here, Alvlanga says that it shows that white does not understand the true value of his position. His only advantage consisted in the undeveloped condition of black bishop on c8, right? So since this bishop was stuck on c8 for the entire game uh, until now, um, after e5, obviously that bishop wants to get out, right? Where does it get out? Uh, b7 would not be a match of a development. First of all, it would drop the b7 pawn. 
Um, in other square, e6 is not possible. f5 is obviously not possible. And the only developing square here is g4, right? So reacting on your opponent's ideas. This is the concept of prophylaxis. I'm pretty sure we will talk about uh, this um, term later on. But for now, just simply taking away the developing square from the bishop here. That would secure white center and then simply rook f1, rook d1, um, continue bringing out um, remaining pieces, I think would offer uh, white better chances. However, white commits to a serious inaccuracy here, goes d5, and after queen c7 in a little bit here, um, I think position will become uh, very one-sided. I would say game becomes one-sided. Um, white strengthens the center there, bishop b7, rook f c1. Um, that is true, white does have a very strong center here, but black has very strong control of the dark squares, and that's what they will be taking advantage of with the start of this maneuver, bishop e7. Rook c2, bishop goes to c5, lands on a very um, healthy diagonal, uh, a7, g1, queen b2, f6 was played into the game. Um, we could argue here that rook a to e8 is probably stronger uh, because that would be more aggressive approach here to uh, handle the white center. f5 is a threat and bishop c8, g6. Um, first of all, after f5, you can take because of e4, so you would have to play something like rook a to e1. Uh, but uh, long story short, black would immediately start going for this f5 idea. Um, in the game, f6 was played, rook b1, rook a to d8. Black takes some time here to regroup, re-maneuver. Uh, rook d1, rook f to e8, queen b3, rook d6. Uh, knight to h4, white wants to activate the knight now uh, by entering on f5. Uh, black does not want to allow that. G6, bishop back to e2, c takes d5. This is probably a little rushed here. Uh, center is very fixed, so black would still be better off going for this f5 idea, bringing bishop back to c8. Also, it, it is very important to notice, actually, that white was threatening to go bishop g4 in this position and then try to plant that bishop on e6. Uh, so bishop c8 would stop that and as well as renew this threat of f5. Um, however, black decides to take on d5. I think this could be a little, uh, this could be caused with misjudgment of the position here. Um, after c takes d5, it may seem uh, that um, black here after, let's say, taking on e2, uh, is better, um, better um, positioned because um, of an active bishop and the op opponent's um, knight not being able to um, get into the game uh, efficiently. However, I think in the long term, that knight may very, very, very well uh, come back from uh, f3, d2, and let's say c4, for example. Um, but important uh, point here to understand also is a protected uh, passed pawn. This d5 pawn in any kind of endgame will be a serious force uh, to reckon with. Now these two pawns become very dangerous force and immediately black uh, plays e4 to um, misplace that knight on h4, g3 to rewrote the knight. Um, and uh, black goes e3. I think uh, this is a rushed decision and Cabo Blanca um, uh, says the same thing. Such advances as a rule should only be made when they can be followed by immediate attack or immediate win of material, uh, for example. Um, what I mean by that is after e3, white played f4 and now uh, the attack kind of got stuck here, so it will take black much more um, willpower uh, and firepower there to succeed. Um, 
compared to uh, simply playing f5, continuing the attack here, um, and then probably open up the f file, bring rook to f file, bring bishop back to uh, c8. The position kind of uh, plays itself if you go back, the knight g2, then g5, f4. Um, there is no need to um, force here, um, locking the position if uh, we do not have an immediate continuation. Uh, bishop c8, knight f3, black decides to bring bishop into the game. Rook moves on the side, rook goes to e4, king g2, queen c8. A little bit of uh, footwork there. Uh, now bishop h3 is a threat, so white goes knight g1 to stop it, and black forces opening up some files. Uh, g5 forces basically um, trade off a pawn there. Um, either f file or g file um, will be opened um, on the next move. So white decides to uh, open up the f file. f takes g, f takes g, and rook goes to g1. Um, black uh, here decides to play g4. Um, it is um, one kind of move, I would say, uh, it takes away this important f3 and h3 squares from white pieces. And now any kind of check to a king will be a very dangerous uh, encounter. Uh, so uh, that was the reason. Probably rook h6 uh, with some threats of bishop h3 was also possible. <laughs> um, you... And I should be happy that uh, g4 was played because I think resulting uh, um, resulting position will be will be very fun to see here. Knight e2, queen goes to f8. Um, obviously, e4 rook cannot be captured because after bishop takes it back with the check uh, and the checkmate on the um, next move on f1, entire white's position just uh, collapses. Uh, rook b to b1 was played. Um, there's a line given here, actually knight f4, uh, after which I think e2 is the correct way to, to win here, um, which is actually followed by a very nice um, very nice uh, series of tactics here. If, it, uh, uh, if knight e2, um, rook takes e2, rook takes e2, bishop e4 check. Um, I didn't want you to pause uh, and, and look to, uh, through this because I think this is a pretty advanced tactic. So um, <laughs> props uh, on you if you uh, were able to see it. Uh, bishop e4 check, rook takes e4 check. There is a rook f2 and although we are down a rook, uh, white actually gets checkmated there after rook f2. Uh, if you take rook f2, oh, Queen takes f2, and then queen g1 will be a checkmate. Okay, uh, there's a line given in the book, uh, queen h6, and it says after queen c2, queen h3 uh, will end up uh, uh, with the very beautiful finish. And it is true, actually, it is definitely very beautiful there. King h1, and then e2. Uh, and uh, a pretty uh, crazy line here. If you take uh, bishop uh, e2, um, let's let's say I think uh, or well bishop e2 I believe rook takes e2 yep that's what's uh, what's happening here if you take queen e2 bishop e4 check uh, and that forces queen takes e4 and then a rook uh, f1 would be a checkmate actually it doesn't quite force it there's rook f3 but I, I think rook um, takes f3 is still a checkmate uh, if you take uh, the bishop rook f1 still mates. Uh, if rook e1, there is a very nice move here, bishop g4. So we just sacrifice the queen and we're sacrificing more material, but this king is in a very difficult spot. Uh, this bishop and the pawn put them at the edge. So right now, bishop f3 check uh, mate is the threat. And if you take on e4, then rook f1 would be a checkmate. So uh, it's a, a, a trouble, trouble. <laughs> However, um, after e2 here, uh, which was probably very difficult to see at the times, uh, this book is written in 1930s, um, <laughs> or, or even earlier, um, there is a rook b to b1. I was curious uh, and checked it by computer if this thing actually worked. 
and look, it turns out that rook b to b1 stops the checkmate and then white is left just uh, uh, queen up <laughs> so uh, that is that line but uh, e2 still wins and i think that is uh, nice enough here uh -huh nice enough of a geometry if you take with the bishop then rook f1 and you still get the getting mated g1 or f2 okay on queen f1 rook b to b1 was played in the game to uh, support the rook on f1 um, and queen now goes to h6 to um, attack it attack the king from h3 um, sense of initiative again that is the topic here we are trying to bring all our pieces into the attack okay uh, the more pieces we have into the attack uh, the faster it will um, take the op take down the opponent's defenses let's put it that way <laughs> uh, queen goes uh, to c2 queen h3 uh, check king back to h1 and here we have a very beautiful finish again um, i would recommend you to stop the video um, and look for the win yourself let me know in the comments if you are able to find it uh, or not rook h6 immediately there will be knight g1 attacking the queen and queen is able to defend from the second rank okay so we want to distract that queen how do we do that by rook c4 why don't we give up another rook rook takes c4 queen takes c4 bishop can take because it's pin and now bishop takes d3 um, if immediately rook h6 i think there is d6 check and i believe this should still be winning but there will be some addition maybe not actually because now if you go uh, king g7 there are additional checks something like queen c3 if we go f8 rook takes f5 so uh, we don't want to allow additional counterplay here bishop takes d3 attacking the queen and if queen takes d3 rook h6 simply checkmates on h2 for that reason uh, white try white tried to um for that reason, white tried one last trick in the game. Rook takes f6, bishop takes f uh, c4, knight goes to f4. Now this queen is trapped, it has nowhere to go. Uh, but we don't need it to move anywhere because after e2, there are more important things happening on the board. That king on h1 is getting checkmated. This bishop still has it at the edge there so if another bishop is able to get to d5 that is going to be a checkmate so knight h3 right now is not a possibility because of this checkmate rook g1 was played and queen f1 wraps up um, the game by forcing the checkmate on next couple of moves there are a lot of checkmates hanging here g1 is hanging we take we promote the checkmate uh, bishop d5 is also a checkmate there if knight is moved so uh, game is pretty much over i think um, after e2 this is probably the uh, position uh, of the game here <laughs> two uh, that demonstrates the true power of two bishops